a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Ben in San Jose. Ben, what's going on, brother? Hey, Tom. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? I just wanted to thank you and your team and everything. I've been using your technique with the 10-minute charts, watching the VIX, and uh, just making a fortune here on the futures. Isn't it interesting? Interesting. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's wonderful. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate okay, it. Okay, man. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Now, Tom O'Brien. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Zoop. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. TGIF, as Tom would say, definitely is. Uh, before we break into anything, what's going on with the market, let's just do you know some housekeeping. First things first, we had uh, live trading Fridays again today. Uh, with Larry Pesavento. Uh, that was awesome. That occurs every second and fourth Friday uh, of the month. So I believe the next one is going to be, pull up my calendar here. I believe that's going to be the 22nd. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so that'll be the 22nd. Uh, that's going to be a good time. For this month, we have, uh, you can use the code Larry NOV24. That gets you $50 off your uh, first month. Again, the price for this is going to go for, for two sessions. That is both the second and fourth Friday. Of course, if you buy for the fourth Friday, you get to go to the you know second Friday of, say, December. Uh, so nothing to worry about there. Additionally, now this is super interesting. We got something new cooking up right now. Uh, we have Basil on. He's, he's the author of the opening call newsletter. Uh, he's the host of the um, Tiger Technicians Hour, 10 a.m. Eastern Time right here on Tiger Financial News Network. Uh, super recommend checking that out. Uh, but usually when he's on, um, <clears throat> one of the things I say is such a great value added for being a subscriber to the opening call newsletter is that you get access to all of his subscriber webinars, okay? Uh, these are really just fantastic kind of lecture series that he does. Uh, so we do have a new one, this is Sectors and Stocks for the Next Market Phase. That's going to be Thursday, November 14th, 4 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You have sector rotation to continue his new group's rally. Former out of favor big losers are becoming big winners. That's going to be massive, especially as we're entering into this new phase with a new president. Analyzing weekly timeframes to gauge intermediate term trends. Demonstrating the critical 914 moving average crossover. The Chapman Wave technical tools of importance and then questions will be answered during uh, the live session. Uh, they definitely are, right? So this gets hosted in the Discord server that we have. Uh, if you're not a part of Discord, uh, of our server, at least on Discord, I really recommend uh, that you at least check it out. We're talking about trading all day long. People are posting their trades, different kind of musings of what's going on in different industries. Uh, and the best part is that's really $1 a year. Now, if you're a subscriber and you get to go to this uh, webinar here, you're not going to pay that $1, right? You still have to set the Discord up. But we just do that, $1 at least, just to know who's in our server. We want to keep everyone safe and just kind of prevent, you know, spam. And it's done a fantastic job. I don't think we've had any issues with that in like the, what, the three years we've been running this, two years we've been running this. So yeah, go ahead and check that out. Again, uh, if it is your first time subscribing to the opening call newsletter, uh, not to worry. You know, we do offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. Uh, if for whatever reason, as long as it's your first time, right, for whatever reason, it doesn't work out for you, uh, we really bet that it is going to work out for you. This is a fantastic newsletter, but just in case you were a little bit nervous for whatever reason, that safety net is there, uh, but we don't think that you're going to have to use it because it is a fantastic service. Uh, additionally, uh, tomorrow, November 9th, uh, there is a public uh, funeral, essentially, for Tom O'Brien. I believe tomorrow would have been his birthday, uh, which is doubly great because I think the day after is the uh, Marines 249th birthday. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, that will be at Bay Pines National Cemetery. Again, that's Bay Pines National Cemetery. Uh, that's going to be at 10 a.m., uh, obviously, in St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, so, you know, uh, the family welcomes you and all that kind of stuff. Again, that's a public um, event. And then I believe we are doing something afterwards, but that will be announced uh, at the funeral as well, um, <clears throat> what that next phase will be. So, again, Bay Pines National Cemetery. It'll be fantastic if you guys can make it out. Um, if you need uh, any directions or just help finding that, you can email me at jacob at tfnn.com. Uh, additionally, you can call me on my personal cell. I won't give that out um, on YouTube live stream, but you can email me at jacob at tfnn.com and I can give that 
uh, to you in case you guys uh, need help. So just please let me know on that. And again, that's Bay Pines National Cemetery. Um, okay, let's take a look at what we have going on in this market. Man, still moving kind of higher, right? I mean, we're up a little sideways right now in the composite at least, right? We're up about 0.07% trading at 19,282. Dow Jones Industrial, is this new all-time highs? Yeah, it is. Unbelievable. Up 0.81% right now, trading at $44,082 on the Dow Jones Industrial. That dollar is coming right back up, up 0.54% at 105. That's the DXY. Uh, crude oil coming down a little bit off about 2.6%, trading at $70.48 uh, for that light, sweet crude future. Uh, and then the E-mini. We're making all-time highs in that again. Yes, we are. We're off a little bit from the all-time highs of that was made today. Uh, that all-time high was 60.40, 50 cents. Trading right now at 6,029 and about 25 cents, up about 0.42%. Uh, right now, gold contracts still coming back down a little bit, uh, stumbling just a tad, trading uh, off about 0.45% at 2,693. You have copper coming off 2.65%, trading at 431 on that contract. Uh, the Russell doing okay, up about 0.55%, um, 2,409. Silver off about 1.41, trading at 31.40 on that contract. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, we're going to talk really, we have like some news today. We're going to talk about some earnings. Um, you know, how we can maybe get set up for uh, some earnings next week as well uh, to kind of play around and see what's going on. Uh, Tesla, though, this is insane. And this is why I always get so like scared to honestly short this stock, right? Uh, Tommy actually made a fantastic call doing that um, in Market Insights. Strongly recommend checking out that newsletter. Um, but he did successfully, which is not something I would ever be able to do uh, because this stock, I can go long it all I want, right? If I want to go, you know, we have all these kind of different leverage ETFs if you want to kind of get into that deal, um, but but moving up uh, so immensely. Now, it is kind of interesting to note. Now, uh, you know, you get a lot of Tesla movement because of his inclusion in to the, the, the Trump cabinet but you had, uh, I want to pull this up. This is Toyota, the COO for North America. Apparently you had something to say about the government pushing forward with, with the build out of EVs and how it was uh, actually not the proper time to do that. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit. This was just released pretty recently here, but maybe about like an hour ago. Um, so yeah, this is Hollis. He's the COO of North America for Toyota. Of course, Toyota had kind of a tough um, earnings as well. Uh, they basically said, we have these EVs and we need to sell these EVs and nobody's buying these EVs right now. Um, they said the US's policy of promoting the speedy adoption of electric vehicles, calling them de facto mandates, is out of sync with consumer demand. Noting government support for EVs has been a highly debated issue in the US presidential election. Uh, Jack Hollis said all the electric vehicles should grow organically without rules penalizing gas-powered vehicles. The whole EV ecosystem is ahead of the consumer. It's not in line with consumers. It's just not. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, before we went to the break, we were sharing, talking about some thoughts that uh, the chief operating officer of Toyota North America, Hollis, had. Uh, I, I didn't realize that. So Toyota apparently was one of the last automakers to withdraw support for an effort under the first Trump administration to prevent California from continuing to set its own emission standards. Uh, they are planning to roll out American-made EVs in 2026, which you're already starting to see um, some interesting promises to, you know, move development out of areas like, you know, China or elsewhere uh, within the world. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I thought that was kind of fascinating. Um, makes me kind of... You know, I just, I, I wonder, like, it, it doesn't make sense, right, that Musk would convince Trump not to do the EV thing, right? But but who knows? I mean, this is, like, weird stuff. It, the whole thing's weird. So, you know, at this point, it's like, you know, as confident as I was in saying, like, you know, something like, you know, Rivian, for instance, which we're going to go through their earnings, kind of what they said uh, a little bit. But, uh, you know, that's, a, that's, that's an American EV company, right? And I could see an argument as well, being like, yo, we're going to produce these things here in America. This is American made. We're bringing this back. We have lithium here. We can start extracting. We can build the batteries out. You know, that is in line with that kind of philosophy. But um, then, then, yeah, you know, how much of this demand, you know, truly was being pushed um, by, you know, some laws that might not be continued under a Trump administration. It's, it's hard to say, and it's kind of freaky to be in um, some of these stocks that, that, that you know, are not attached uh, with, say, you know, Musk. I mean, you have Lucid off 1.13%. Uh, their earnings weren't even bad. We could talk about them, too. But let's just take a look at Rivian, I guess, quickly. That's up 4.28%, turning at 1047. But, you know, it, I'm starting just to like not really like like the company. Uh, you know, the longer I like read some of their stuff. So, uh, so we talk about some of the key hi highlights they had, right? This is from their shareholder letter. Say, so, okay, they're reaffirming the 2024 delivery of 50,000 to 500. Uh, excuse me, 50,500 to 52,000 vehicles. 20% increase in demo drives compared to QT uh, Q2 24, which I, is nice. The tri-motor configuration with 2.9 seconds to 60 miles per hour and a range up to 405 miles, okay. Yeah, okay, and then this is the thing. The R2 sourcing in line with targets, 85% bill of materials sourced to date. Um, who knows what the acquisition time is to get the rest of that kind of stuff. And they've been having consistent issues uh, with their supply chain, right? 
Majority of their customers subscribe to Connect Plus following the free trial period. Okay, so that's like some kind of when when you have their uh, who is I forget the other guy that they had speaking. It wasn't Scaringe, the CEO, but there's some other guys like, oh, we're more of an IT company. We're more of an app company, which is ridiculous to say, but I believe that's what that Connect Plus is, which can kind of outcompete, <clears throat> excuse me, with Apple. Uh, and then they say surprisingly that they're on track still for positive gross profit for the fourth quarter in 2024 which is news to probably just about everyone because they were, or they've, they've had severe complications. Um, this is the uh, balance sheet here. Well, that's the cash, give me a second. So, okay, this is from the past, the year past. This is from this year, the one they're reporting on now. Their current, their cash and cash equivalents have contracted, short-term investments contracted, Accounts receivable is up 217 million. Like, okay, that's not bad actually. Inventory, okay, up a little bit. Other current assets up slightly, but you have a general contraction just in total assets from the last year, you know, really having to do with cash and cash equivalents in, in, in essentially, you know, short term investments. It's kind of unfortunate. You do have a decrease in accounts payable, which is nice. Accrued liabilities, less. But overall, you have more total liabilities, mainly due to this long-term debt, which is kind of how they're financing themselves. Now, the five billion exists with VW, but you know they're burning through money, just consistently burning through money. Uh, let's see what else. Revenue, at least on the nine months, is slightly higher. If three-month period, it is you know, slightly lower. But you, you had issues around this time, right, within the past three months for them, starting in September. Uh, Lower gross profit, <laughs> I don't know. I just like a larger loss, right? I mean, this is kind of nuts. Um, I mean, not larger, sorry, but still like marginally high, right? 1.3 billion to 1 1.4. I mean, really, yeah, 1.37 to 1.42. Yeah, so it would be interesting to see if they can get profitable like Q4 uh, of, of, of this year, which is pretty nuts. Anyways, yeah, I don't know. Um, Higher net loss here in 2024 is just for three months. Depreciations hitting um at least they have less net cost, but I wonder even like why it's less net net cost. I mean, is it because they're not able to get the stuff they need? I don't know. It, it, well, well, I'll see what happens, but I'm I'm feeling I'm in Rivian, you know, and. I, I, I bought at a higher level than here. I sold part of it for a decent profit, but like held on to some because I was like, yeah, let's see what happens. And it just kind of got smoked. Um, yeah, company revenues from Chase Bank. Yeah, anyways, if you want this, I can send it to you. You can also just find it as well, but um, I, I have it so I can at least send it. But that's what you got going on in Rivian right now. Um, <clears throat> not super like attractive in any capacity, I, I, I think. Um, and then the whole market itself uh, for EVs is is in a is in a tight spot, you know. And I mean, you know, I, I could see an event or uh, excuse me, an event where you know Musk somehow convinces or someone else in the cabinet's like, hey, listen, man, like we do this EV, like we make it, we're the biggest in this kind of stuff. And you you can build that out over a horizon, like over a longer term, and still you know do the drill, drill baby drill type thing that that Trump is trying to achieve. Um, I, I don't think that, you know, they, they cancel each other out. I mean, you can still plan to do this kind of stuff over a longer period of time uh, and, and still benefit from having so much oil. So, you know, we'll see what happens like that. Uh, at least with Lucid, I just think right now it's like not super, it's, it's very uh, uncertain, I would suppose. Uh, Lucid off 1.17%, trading at 219. It produced 1,800 vehicles in Q3 on track for an annual production of approximately 9,000 vehicles, delivered 2,781 vehicles in Q3. That's up 90.9% compared to Q3, 2023. Q3 revenue, about 200 million. You have a gap net loss per share of uh, 41 cents, non-gap of 28, have about 516 billion in total liquidity ending this quarter, and uh, completed capital raise of essentially 1.75 uh, billion. And I think the general market just has this kind of like suppressing feeling, you know, Tesla is going to be able to produce more. They're able to produce at lower costs than these companies are, you know, I mean, it, 
if they don't get like hyper funding like Rivian gets, I mean, they burn as much capital as well. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. They have a very rosy outlook on it. Uh, the gravity orders start today. Um, production on track to begin later this year. And that's a new line they have. Um, and then their guy believes that the total addressable market for gravity is six times that of lucid air. So, I mean, if true, you know, you start doing some solid stuff with the company. But uh, again, I, I think macro factors are playing a pretty big role uh, right now in Lucid and, and, and Rivian as well. Uh, so right there, guys. We'll be right back. Trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, everyone. Jacob Shoup, you are watching the Tom O'Brien Show right here on Tiger Financial News Network. Uh, over the break, 
I was looking at some new headlines. This is kind of interesting to kind of talk about. You have Salesforce, this is CRM, that's the ticker, trading up 3.42% at $321.41. Wow, this has gone, dare I say, Icarian. We'll see what happens with that. Um, obviously, a huge plummet here on, on earnings around uh, May 29th, trading to a low of $212. Oh, and I also want to say, that reminds me, before we just move on, Lucid is, like, that's at an all-time low right now at the 219. You do have the Saudis buying a ton of Lucid. You know, just throw that out there. Yeah, do your own thoughts on it. But uh, I think the macro environment for EVs. Anyways, is, is in a tough spot. Look, 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 take a look at it. At Salesforce here up 3.4%, as I was saying, trading at 321.48. Uh, They're planning to hire more than 1,000 workers to sell its new generative AI agent product. So, you know, even in an environment where you're having kind of like contracting job openings and stuff like that, I mean, we've seen layoffs the entire year. Adding this in, they, they must have some pretty strong conviction behind it. As capitalizing on the, quote, amazing momentum for the new artificial intelligence product that CEO Mark Benoit said in a message, Agent Force became available just two weeks ago and we're already hearing incredible feedback from our customers. Kind of interesting. Tools that complete tasks such as customer support or sales development without human supervision. Launched the product, Agent Force, last month with an initial pricing of about $2 per agent conversation. Whoa, that probably scales pretty heavily. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, ServiceNow is also doing it. Microsoft Corp is also doing it. And something really interesting that my friend told me, he got a new Samsung and there's some AI cooked into the thing and it can answer your phone calls, which is pretty sweet. Um, I wonder if you could like, I don't know, you code it to like screw with telemarketers or something, that would be worth the buy. Uh, shares are up obviously 1.15%, but they're up 3.42 uh, right now. Going into this entire kind of thing, I, I mean, there, there's about to be a big building boom. I think with, with data centers, and this is gonna be crazy for, for builders themselves, for sourcing all that material, um, even like just, you know, cables to talk. I mean, we were talking even, you know, think of like Cisco or Juniper for like the cybersecurity and the network. I mean, Cisco for the, the networking itself for these big server centers, uh, the data centers are gonna be absolutely massive and we might see a big, big boom. You know, Qualcomm is something to kind of look into, I guess, on that. Um, with their, they're, they're baking in like AI chips into the, the switches, uh, which is kind of nuts. Um, but, I, but I wonder if that actually does get some, some major traction, especially when we start building these massive things. So private construction spending on data centers has surged close to 30 billion a year. That's according to the most recent numbers from the Census Bureau, doubled what it was in late 2022. Corporate America now allocates bigger building budget for data centers, love that, than it does for all kinds of categories that were attracting more cash as recently as last year. The U.S. is leading the surge of investments in data centers with global spending on track to reach $250 billion a year, according to the money manager KKR. Uh, the industry is benefiting from the development of AI and computational power. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do some more looking. I mean, it's not even close this kind of spending. I mean, it's to, we're just doing data center. Manufacturing is up a little bit, 30% increase. The power, including oil and gas, is only about 10%, but that's gonna increase for sure. Oh, man. You know, I was even looking, you've had some issues with the idea of like co-location, uh, right? Uh, with powering some of these data centers, which creates an issue. The FERC said that they weren't gonna allow uh, this to happen, I guess, with Amazon and Talon. Talon it does have earnings reporting, I believe, next Thursday, but we'll cover that most likely next week. Um, let me see. Yeah, so Thursday before open, just a heads up on that. Uh, and then Trump was being interviewed and ab about, you know, the energy problem that we're going to have with these data centers. And his big thing seems to be like, we're going to drill for oil. There's not going to be enough. There's just... The way that we're going to need to scale this up and ramp it, um, we'll be consuming such unbelievable amounts of oil um, that will become just like a state that does that, you know. And he was asked, this is from Joe Rogan, he was asked, you know, what do you think of nuclear power? And it seemed like he was opposed to restarting a lot of these older ones. 
because they're just inefficient, the building's inefficient, especially if you start new ones. Uh, but he did bring up small modular reactors, which is interesting. That made me want to go to energy.gov uh, and kind of look as like, was there anything that Trump did in the his, his, his prior tenure as president uh, that, that benefited nuclear energy? And it turns out there, there was, which is kind of cool. Um, so we, I'm just going to pull this over here, actually. Just take a look at it. Yeah. So the Vogel units three and four, new nuclear reactors, which is solid, citing the nation's first SMR, the Idaho National Laboratory, by 2026. The DOE is supporting setting of 12 modular, uh, excuse me, module SMR plants, establishing national reactor, uh, excuse me, reactor innovation center. This is like nuclear medicine kind of here. Uh, deploying micro reactors, very cool. Molten salts building versatile test reactors. So, I mean, there, there, you know, there, there was some attraction to this when he was running last time. So, I mean, I think it's not as uh, sketchy for nuclear as, as I thought it kind of would be, especially with some of his rhetoric. Um, pathways to high SA, uh, low enriched here, uranium, which is pretty massive. UUU benefits from that quite a bit. Um, let's see. Yeah, so anyways, I think this actually might not be a, a terrible thing. So we're going to build these data centers out. That's going to be deliver a massive boom, which is exactly what Trump's talk is always about, right? Like, we're going to bring jobs back here. We're going to make this country yada yada, right? That's going to allow that to be satisfied. And then we can produce a lot of this uranium, at least not necessarily nationally, but near nationally, especially uh, through Kamiko, which I think is going to be good. So we'll see what happens with all that. Anyways, I thought it was kind of kind of interesting. Let's talk a little bit uh, about a firm. Let me see here. This is obviously the buy now, pay later. Uh, they got they're down today right now, off about four point nine six percent, even in light of like some pretty solid earnings, right? So. This is a quote from Levchin. This is their guy over there. We are feeling good about our credit performance and credit outcomes. Very excited about the holiday season, obviously, but the credit quality is exactly the kind of control we want it to be. We're going to talk some more about this company when we get back because I'm, I'm interested why this sell-off occurred. Um, yeah, stay right there. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. 
That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, everyone. Before we went to the break, we were talking about a firm. They have their earnings. They're trading off 5.3% right now at $46.18. Uh, let's take a so the shares of the firm slumped, yeah, after this report. A firm uh, said that the rate of 30-day delinquent monthly installment loan was 2.8%, which is up from 2.4% a year earlier, while 60-day delinquency rates rose 1.7% from 1.4%. Okay. They, but I believe they grew the amount of people that were buying into it, and something that's kind of important to know as well is how a firm actually makes their money, right? Like there's no increased rates being charged on the use of this. They say you pay $100 for something, they'll have you pay an installment plan over however many months. I've never used a firm, but that is how it works, right? So where do they get their money from? I mean, they get their money from charging merchandisers, essentially, right? To be able to use uh, that service or at least have customers use that service there. And they pay the guys up front for it uh, by by l borrowing money. And so you have at a moment where you're having lower interest rates coming in that should provide more quality cash flow for these guys to be able to expand operations. At least for Q1 2025, general merchandise increased, what, 47% year over year, fashion and beauty up 19%, which, you know, that probably should grow a little bit. Travel ticketing up 25%, electronics up 33%. Yeah, I mean, they, they grew for sure. And uh, it's going to be cheaper for them to get the money they need to secure the transaction, right? More people are using them, paying them more money. Revenue grew by 41%. Merchant fees are staying constant, but that's okay. Revenue less transaction costs up 34%. Revenue less transaction costs X provision up 43%. Operating expenses down. Yeah. So I, I don't know if it's because of the because of the delinquency increase, right? Yeah, that, that's what I can say, right? Ninety days delinquents up 0.8 percent from 0.7 on the 90 days, 60 days 1.7 from like roughly 1.4. Yeah, I don't know. 30 day plus delinquency reform is against sector consumer lenders. I don't think that's a long-term issue for it, um, especially to come back down like 5.76%. And when you're coming into the holiday season, people are still very, very tight on cash. Um, inflation is coming down, but you know, we didn't get deflation. So uh, things are still relatively expensive. I can see a firm roaring, especially with some, you know, some lower borrowing rates. I'm going to take a closer look at this, you know, over the weekend and see, you know, if I want to take like a position in it or anything like that. Um, and maybe this is just kind of like a overreaction sell-off and we bounce back up Monday morning. Uh, that can definitely be the case. Um, it is on somewhat high volume, but, you know, you have other days kind of on similar and, you know, you have this big gap up on, on markedly higher volume. So anyways, that's what we got going on uh, for a firm. Kind of interesting. Let's talk about earnings with Paramount. 
I'm really happy. I was kind of thinking like, no, maybe I, you know, play this earnings, but I have, I just don't know enough about this company to make an educated uh, decision beyond just, you know, what they've been saying um, <clears throat> with the revenue in the past. And it was, it was interesting. Actually, their, their biggest L they took was from like TV, which is kind of funny, right? Uh, they added 3.5 million streaming subs. The revenues fell 6% with TV and film dragging this down pretty heavily, right? One of the biggest fears I had was that they were gonna lose some steam with the streaming, right? They just got profitable with streaming, just had enough people. Last night I was like looking up, I mean, this is past the point where I could have bought anything for the company on earnings. But, um, you know, I was like, hey, uh, like how do we say? You know, what do they have that's unique that's gonna drive me to get to Paramount? I guess they have a lot of sports stuff on it, which is something, but they don't have any like unique things they're 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 making just for their service, as far as I could tell in any you know real capacity there. Uh, revenues for Q3 were 6.73 billion, that's down six percent. Adjusted earnings were up 63% at 49 cents, which outperformed expectations. Um, the consensus had called for about 24 cents a share, so they really knocked that out of the park. Uh, that was down from 30 cents a share a year ago with revenue declining to 6.95 billion from 713. Uh, OIBDA was up 20%. And so the direct consumer revenue was actually particularly high. This is up 10% with Paramount Plus, adding 3.5 million subscribers to push its total up to 72 million and solidify its spot as the fourth largest uh, streamer. Revenue is up 10%. So it's like, it's almost kind of funny, like in a way that, you know, are they just getting into streaming to really like pair losses from their, you know, previous dominant kind of thing? Um, revenue for TV segment at 4.3 billion, that's down 6% as well. The drop was attributed to lower affiliate revenue and fluctuations in licensing turnover. Advertising dropped 2%, the political advertising in the run up to Donald Trump's reelection partially offset losses elsewhere. The recognition of revenue unreported by an international sales partner helped push the numbers in the right direction. Paramount noted TV media licensing had dropped due to lower volumes in the secondary market. Then film entertainment revenues fell 34% to 590 million. Theatrical down 71%. Box office successes during the quarter, which is a quiet place and Transformers won. Okay. However, adjusted earnings increased uh, by 52 million versus Q3 2023. Lower revenue from home entertainment and licensing of film library titles were partially offset by higher studio facility revenue compared with last year. They just seem like they got a lot going on. Instead of it's like some pure streaming play, you know, like Netflix, uh, they just have a lot of different things that can get hit. And in some ways, honestly, I feel like the TV and the streaming, I mean, that's like competitive with itself. So kind of strange on that, but... That's what we're doing with Paramount, off 4.29% right now, trading at 11.04. Uh, I believe we're going to go to the break pretty quickly here, but I want to talk about... Um, I'll wait for that to the break. Let's see what else we can talk about in the meantime. You have Airbnb up, you have Pinterest down, ASTS. This thing is going to get in some problems, especially with Elon Musk being in charge. That's up 2% right now, 21.85% but you run all the way up to 40, completely come back down. This is a satellite company, right? Um, I believe Starlink has a pretty strong kind of competition with these guys. Now, I don't think Starlink right now is doing anything major, I would say, with uh, you know, huge internet connectivity. I think they're direct to sell. ASTS is 5G, but if Elon can convince Trump You know, to let him operate a little bit differently, I think they could start competing in ASTS. It's in a major uh, issue. I remember we, uh, when this ran up, we were like, hey, let's get out of this thing really quickly or at least short it. I didn't actually do that, um, but kind of just looking at it, and that was a good move on it. This one in particular, because you're probably going to start seeing it a little more often now, uh, is a Reddit meme stock uh, entirely. So just a heads up on that. Um, I don't know when they report earnings. It should be yeah, somewhat soon, I guess, right? But um, anyways, that's up 2.4%. I think they can be in problems uh, or receive problems with, with Musk being so close to Trump. So there there, folks. We'll be right back.
Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. What's going on, everyone? Jacob Shoup, you're watching The Tom O'Brien Show. You're watching the last segment of The Tom O'Brien Show. We only have a short one. Take a look at BBAI. Uh, someone in the den told me about this, which is why I recommend you get in the den. You can take a look at what we got going on in there. It's up 1.44%, trading at $1.76. Uh, it had some pretty decent earnings. You had revenue increasing 22% to $41.5 million, compared to $34 million in 2023. Gross margin of 25.9% versus 24.7. Uh, the net loss of $12.2 million. Cash about, yeah, look, here, I'll just pull this over. They're getting in pretty heavily, like, let's see here, with the military, they do essentially do, like, predictive analysis, right? This is kind of what their whole gig is. You have them making a deal with Palantir, uh, which is huge, because Palantir was also just awarded a 920 million sole source contract for uh, ADSS, which is unbelievable for them. <laughs> uh, this, it looks, these, they, you know, nice, especially at this kind of, like, you know, it's unprofitable right now, but... Um, it seems like they're getting a lot of momentum. Uh, what else did they do? They made yeah, Concept Solutions awarded the IDIQ contract with the FAA, implemented biometric boarding solutions for Denver International. Kind of interesting. Participates in the U.S. Navy MAPG exercise. Receives additional awardable status for DOD's work in the Chief Digital and Artificial Intelligence Office. Their cash and cash equivalents are getting 
a lot better, accounts receivable a lot better, contract assets a little bit less on it, prepaid expenses and other current assets roughly uh, the same, but their total current assets have blown up. Total assets have also increased majorly. You've had a decrease in liabilities. I think a lot of that was kind of offset and they must have diluted at some point here. No, yeah, no, they did, <laughs> which is why you get that. But still interesting, kind of interesting to look at. Improving revenue, it's good. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. If you're coming tomorrow, we'll see you 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, right at Bay Pines National Cemetery. Uh, if we don't, we will see you Monday morning, 9 a.m. with Tommy O'Brien in the morning market kickoff. Take care. Building wealth trading in the stock